Back in the zone, we're heading to Virginia Tech, where okay. wildlife experts closely studying the spread of what is now being referred to as the zombie deer disease. Zombie deer disease. That's it's, a real thing. It's an officially named as chronic wasting disease, also known as CWD. Joining us to explain how to avoid it, what it is, Virginia Tech's Dr. Brett Jesmer. Good to see you. Uh, can you give us a breakdown of what it is? Because when you hear that, you're kind of on high alert. <laughs> Sure, yeah. So chronic waste disease is essentially the same thing as mad cow disease, which many okay. of your viewers may have heard about before in the past. Um, but this time it's in deer. Um, it's a spongiform encephalopathy disease, mm. which essentially means encephalopathy means uh, disease of the brain. Spongiform means essentially a deterioration of the brain to the point where it's like a sponge full of little holes. Wow. Wow. And, and deer carry it. Correct, and so we should avoid deer? Deer carry it, but there's no evidence that it can be transmitted to humans. Oh, okay. That's never been shown, and there's no known cases of that. There are similar diseases in humans, like crutchfield jacobsons disease, um, but regulations and the rules and, you know, recommendations are still that you can eat a deer um, if you hunt and you kill a deer, mm -hmm. it's still okay to eat the deer. We do recommend you get it tested first, and if mm -hmm. it does test positive, probably safe bet okay. to not eat it. But if it tests negative, it's totally fine. So what can we do to, to help them? Yeah, the, the deer, deer, the fawn, Poor is there anything baby deer. we can do? <laughs> well, the, the, the deal with fawns is, you know, often, especially in suburban or urban areas where there are deer, unlike in the, in the wild, you know, moms will go and, and give birth to their fawns in tall grass or in shrubby areas to hide them. But in urban, suburban areas, I mean, they're, they're giving birth to deer right in your backyard or in the middle of a park. And so if you see a deer fawn without its mom, it's not abandoned. Mom needs to go off and feed um, to support its energy needs. You know, lactation is very expensive as they're trying to rear, rear these young. So you should leave the fawn alone. Um, don't think it's abandoned and pick it up and take it somewhere. Okay. And actually, the current rules are in areas where there are CWD, if you snag up a deer fawn and you take it to a wildlife rehab or to your animal control, they actually have to euthanize those deer. Oh, oh. those little fawns. Yeah. So, so don't do it. Very leave them alone. I'll, 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 I'll leave them alone. Yeah, because yeah. I think a lot of times, you know, it's human instinct. You see a fawn oh, and then you want to help deer. it, and you don't know what you're doing, and then you do the wrong thing. Which Come is, here, Bambi. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> some good advice there. Uh, now we know what a chronic wasting disease is. Wow. Virginia Tech's Dr. Brett Jesmer, good having you here on the chronic. DMV Zone, uh, because there is certainly a ton of fawn and deer, especially in the suburban areas, even in D.C. sometimes. Yeah, in my backyard, in my driveway now.